consistent branding, isn't it? Just knowing what you're all about from the go. I want to talk a little bit about money. We're going to jump around here and to our audience members. By all means, <coughs> let's have as much interaction as we can. If you have a question now, there and then, shoot your hand up. Uh, but we will be officially opening for questions in about 7.5 minutes of time. <laughs> we will take your questions before that. I want to get back to the issue of money. Are you making a lot of money? <laughs> Are you <laughs> rich? Are you not curious? <laughs> Because you work really hard, I hope you are rich, because otherwise I'm just going to walk out and go home. <laughs> are you rich? Uh, I think it's extremely important for the business to make money. Um, so so there, uh, to, to be honest, there, there are two uh, models that, that, that we built. Uh, we, we have two businesses, essentially, right? which is Fashion Ballet is one, and then Duck is another one. So with Fashion Belly, we built, we we rode on the whole on the e-commerce wave, and that you know VCs were uh, looking at it as the as the future. So we we said that you know for us to grow to scale, we we wanted it to be an extremely big uh, company, and we needed to raise more money. And to to raise money, you you needed you know to show them like high growth potential, and more often than not, trying to have that high growth potential. Um, you need to spend a lot more money than you're actually making. So we would reinvest a lot of our money and we would go out and raise more and more money. I think up to date we've raised like, uh, more than um, $8 million uh, for Fashion Valley. And, and, yeah, and, and this year, uh, and for Fashion Valley, you know, we're, we're still continuing to, to raise more money from, from investors. And so trying to expand, uh, expand the horizons for Fashion Valley. And with the eventual idea of you know either like listing it or eventually making it profitable once it gets to to a certain scale, and so our we, we have a like nice variety of uh, friendly investors. Uh, one of them being MyG, which is an e-government services provider in Malaysia. Uh, we have an investor from the US called Investor Capital based out of Silicon Valley, and we have um, a Japanese investor called Zozo Town. Uh, they, they run the largest fashion e-commerce site in Japan called Zozo Town. Um, so, you know, we, 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 we were quite fortunate to be able to have our pick uh, of investor. And so, you know, the, the traditional investors who just wanted to invest money came, came to us uh, many times. But then we said that, you know, we don't just want the money, we also want like, some expertise to help these like 20 year olds uh, grow a business to something that can last, you know, 15 years from now, and so that's how we, we decided on those investors. So, so that's Fashion Valley, and you know, we're constantly reinvesting to grow the business. And then we also have Duck, and so for Duck, we said that, you know, this is a business where we don't want to be dependent on on investors because we we want it to be self sustainable. And so from the get go, we were making money. And you know we and and the moment we we had this feeling of oh I'm not dependent on on investors to to tell me that my business can last for the next uh, eighteen months it actually was a great feeling and and we thought that you know this was something uh, that we want to be free of you know we don't want to be tied down to someone else to tell us that uh, our future is going to be secure so so we also decided that you know let's maintain that with Doug. And you know, try and grow it out of its own merit and out of its own own business. So for Tuck, we're we're making money, you know, um, ha happily making money. And for Fashion Valley, we still want to go the route of raising money from investors. So trying to scale it and trying to uh, trying to tie it up into a ribbon, and so so that more and more investors are interested. So, are you rich? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm fascinated about Duck. It's really, it's a very simple design. Too long, essentially. Most of them are one color, uh, plain colors, block colors. Talk to me about the fierce competition for the hijab, the tudon, and how you're coping with that. Because you've really managed to create quite a huge hole for yourself. Well, you know, um, I know that the scarf market, the tudong market, is a very saturated market. So when I wanted to start, it was purely because I couldn't find a brand that I felt was cool enough. Um, because I didn't wear hijab, you know, and I, I had this. My my mom, my mom was like pestering me all the time. You didn't wear it. I didn't wear it. Yeah, I I I started like four years ago. So wait, you. 
created a company and then you started to wear them. Oh, no, 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 no. I, and then one day I felt, you know what, I, I want to wear it. I felt like it. So then I, I started to get a, buy a lot of scarves from, from brands. And I, I felt like, you know, there isn't one that's like super urban, super cool, you know, like uh, speaking in, in English, a bit more international. And I thought, I want to create something like a Uniqlo for scarves, so all colors, all material, and it's readily available when, when you go to the store. And from time to time, we can do you know, prints, limited edition. Um, so I, 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 I took inspiration from brands like Hermes, you know, um, when it comes in a box, you know, it, to, just to elevate the scarf a bit more. It's not just you know, a scarf, it, it's, it's, a, it's a celebrated act. You know, and when you buy the scarf, you feel like you're getting a present. Um, that's the kind of feeling I want people to have when they buy a duck. But at the same time, on the business side, um, I realized that there are so, so many little brands at the lower price point. Um, and I said, you know what, I don't think I want to compete in that uh, market because I will drown. Um, so then I thought, okay, uh, I want to do a bit more premium, not super premium, like $1,000, but more um, like mid mid range. Um, so that's that's what we did, and, and it clearly was a big hit from the start. Uh, I think I was very nervous with that price point because I everyone was so used to like fifty ringgit to those, which is like what twenty uh, fifty Brunei dollars, right? So everyone was used to that price. So now when there's like a hundred fifty ringgit to those, are people gonna buy it? I don't know, you know. So I had to make sure branding is very strong. Um, it, it was well thought of even before we started um, with a box, with a presentation, with um, an ambassador, a voice to the brand, which is D. Um, and uh, we came up with illustrations to, to tell a story about, about D's life. And uh, I think uh, what drew women to it is also because it's not just a brand selling scarves, you know, there's a story behind it, there's always a story behind it, and they feel like they can relate to this brand. Um, so yeah, I, I, I could go on and on and talk about that, but it really was um, a passion that I wanted to do, it's my creative outlet, and, and I really loved it. So you sell out really quickly, is that like a marketing get scared gimmick, or does it actually sell out that fast? No, we, we were, I. It, it goes against my principle of starting it because I want it to be readily available. Um, I it feel totally like, works. It makes it so hard to get. <laughs> yeah, but that wasn't the, you know, you think sold out is good, but for us, like, damn, we could have made more, made more money. You know, like, yeah, so selling out isn't exactly good. Like, to me, I'm like, oh, I, sh I knew I should have ordered, like, more, you know? Um, and every, every time we, we have a launch, um, it's a very stressful day. <laughs> Yeah, every time we have a launch, it's a very stressful day for us because we don't want customers to be un unhappy. Mm -hmm. And so when when it sells, and and you know we and so we, we have this idea of you know let's uh, not lose money uh, for it when in the duck business. So let's try and you know um, be rational in how much we produce. So every time we produce more and more and more, uh, you know, with a certain limit. But then we it keeps selling out, and you no know, customers are so unhappy with us, and we don't want them to be unhappy. No, literally every day of the that one, I'm staying home. I don't want to go out. I'm scared to see people. <laughs> because as I run a small food company in Brunei, and I, I follow a lot of small businesses on IG, and every time you see a big sold out, we are so proud of ourselves. <laughs> we, we get to go home early from the carnival. Are we not a bit like that? A little bit like that. So that's really a great way to look at it. That God, we could have made more money. That's a great. Maybe that is a mindset that more of us need to adopt. Um, before we open up the floor for questions, I want to quickly run through the criteria for Forbes 30 and 30. Something we can all hold in the back of our minds. Um, they look for the brightest entrepreneurs, the innovators, the game changers, people who are transforming business around the world. Uh, they're looking for people who really make a difference and who are really impacting people's lives. Of that list, before we open up the floor to questions, what do you think best describes you in terms of the Forbes criteria? Yeah, let's go for the geek first. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm very extremely media shy and so uh, when, when people ask me to like do interviews and things like that, I would usually say no. And so I I don't know like about uh, the 
performs this or you know all these things. So the the day that BB actually told me that he said I I want the Forbes this, we were having breakfast and she showed me the email. I I want the Forbes this and I was like okay cool. And I, I had no idea that it was a big deal. And then suddenly throughout the day, you know, people were messaging me. Our investors were messaging me and saying that hey, uh, tell BB I said congratulations, she's on the Forbes list. And then I started googling what the Forbes list was, and I saw all these other people that were. It was a big deal. <laughs> and then the next, the next time I saw her, I was like, hey, say, uh, by the way, congratulations. Congratulations. Get it. Yeah, so I mean, I'm you know extremely proud <laughs> that that BB is like getting on all these lists and being featured on so many things. I I think she's I think you know without coming off as like uh, a cheesy proud husband, I think one of BB's greatest strengths is her charisma and her her storytelling skills, and she manages to translate that into you know her blog and her Instagram accounts, and she's very. Uh, she's very curated in terms of the, the images that, that she uses. So even you know every day we would uh, be late to send the kids, and that's a, because she needs to look very well. <laughs> I mean that's the sacrifice, and so eventually we hired a driver because I couldn't do it anymore. So, so I, I accept that she she has all these things that, that she wants to do to to maintain uh, her image and. And, and I'm I'm very happy for her. So you know, yeah. I I think not wanting all those things um, and being happy that she 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 gets all those things. I think really helps our relationship. Oh my god! I have to cook dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> for me, right? No matter what, you can be on any list. You can be the top, whatever. Your life still is the same throughout the day. You know, you still have to go to work. You still have problems and all that. Um, People will congratulate you on the day, and you might feel happy for a while, but you can't get it, get it like over your head. You know, for me, it was like a thank you, a thank you post on Instagram, and then life goes on. Um, if you keep talking about it, even people will get sick of it. You know, so I don't let it get to my head. For me, I, I still have problems. Like just because I'm on the Forbes, it doesn't mean all my problems go away at, at work, right? Uh, but I think um, coming back to your question um, on the Forbes criteria, why I think we got in is because. Our business does things to the society. It's not just about us making money. You know, for Fashion Valley, it was it's a platform for local designers. So if we succeed, that means local designers succeed too. You know, we give them a chance to make money on our platform. So it's bigger than just us. So if your business can do that um, and do more for society, and and as you grow, someone else grows too. I think. It, it's more meaningful to you to come to work every day. Can I just ask that you've got about you've got hundreds of brands on Fashion Valley. Do we have any brands yeah. on it? We do. Which ones do we, we have? have? Two, I think. Nafora and Yanstera. The owner's here, but she left. Yeah. That's great. So hopefully. So I want to see more of Brunei, you know, brands. It's, it's, um, I I had an Air Asia designer search in in Brunei. Uh, last month, and we met I think about fifteen um, aspiring designers, and and you guys really do have some good talents here, uh, and a lot of the concerns that they had, because I was a judge, and and they they had one on ones with us, and they said that oh we're very scared, you know Brunei is small, and I said look, you can't use that excuse anymore because there's social media, you you said yourself Instagram is very important. Nowadays, people don't even know where the brand's from, you know. Um, so uh, I think brands, especially young designers or young um, entrepreneurs, you can't be scared of. You can't keep using the Brunei small excuse, you know. Um, social media is there. The world has changed tremendously. You can build a successful business even in a small country. So yeah, no excuses. <laughs> Let's have another photo question. We've got um, 15 minutes. Any questions at all? And we'd love to know your name and what you do, your business, where you're from, so you get a bit of a background. This mic? <laughs> yeah, that's not nice, Mike. <laughs> Hi. Um, my name is Shai Lachman. Um, I run two companies. One's Palestrato, which is an active airline. 
and another one which is fitness uh, fitness service. <laughs> um, I'm leaning more towards the service because I realize that products isn't really for me. Um, my two questions actually are: What are your daily habits that make you guys you? Because obviously you guys have a lot of stuff to do, and habits kind of keep you going. If that makes sense, because I know like Richard Branson and stuff, they all have the habits where they read. Um, so I was just wondering, what do you guys do? And two, how do you guys manage your time so well? Because although my company is really small, I always feel overwhelmed daily, and I always feel like I don't have much time. Which isn't actually true because you're busy priorities, right? So I was just wondering, um, in terms of your habits and your time management. <coughs> Um, for me, uh, my basic habits, you know, I never really think about it because obviously you can do what you do, right? Um, I, no matter how big you get or how, how, how um, big your company gets, I think it's very important to talk to your employees, um, uh, not just your managers, like everyone. So um, I think my daily habit is to come into the office and go, good morning, and, um, and talk to people. And that's how I get to know the problems of that day or if they're feeling down. Um, I'm very much a people person. Uh, and you know, uh, I, I, I think um, as a leader, you can't just go straight to your room and shut the door. You need to talk to your employees to find out problems. Yeah. Um, I was going to say the same thing. So uh, I, of course. Think, <laughs> <laughs> I think. Uh, uh, somewhat annoying habit is that I like to know the details of what uh, everyone is doing and especially when there are problems you know and I'll and they know that I'll always question them why are we having these problems because now uh, when the company gets bigger you know a problem uh, on one side it shouldn't be a problem but then it's a problem for them just because of miscommunication or because of uh, misunderstanding of, of the processes I think one of the daily habits that uh, I try to stick to is, um, you know, spending time with with family. Uh, we we make sure today we make sure that we always send our kids in the morning uh, when we can. You know, we we have dinner at home together, um, and we 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 do have time together, uh, not just because we're husband and wife, but also to talk about the business. You know, I think that's uh, extremely important to always like keep asking each other, you know, what's what's next, what's next, what's the problems now. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I, I, I don't really think about it. I mean, we, we, we do things as it as it goes along on a day to day basis. You, you read. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do, I do. <laughs> Every morning, uh, he will, he has like a few, you know, news websites that he likes to read. What, what oh, she, yeah. <laughs> well, one of Beauty's uh, habits is uh, she's constantly on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, <laughs> I mean, I don't know, you know, after, after a while it goes to like uh, random people's uh, accounts and like, like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, so I, I guess... Researching. Yeah, I guess reading and Instagram is researching. Uh, I think um, also it's very important to uh, have a creative outlet. You know, when you're overwhelmed with, with uh, your business, obviously it will be. Um, you need to have something that makes you uh, a bit uh, calm. For me, that's blogging. So if I don't blog for like three days, I, I'm a very grumpy person. You know, I just need that. that. It's very therapeutic for me. It's for, uh, an outlet for me to, to release, you know. Um, so if, if, you know, exercising is your hobby, which would be great. Like, <laughs> <laughs> not mine. Uh, or, or gardening or whatever, then then make sure you, you have time to do it. Also, when you're feeling overwhelmed with your business, I think um, you need to make sure you're still having fun because you know challenges come all the time, right? no matter if you're small or big. I think the amount of work you put in doesn't change um, whether you're small or big. So make sure that you're still enjoying what you're doing. Even when the challenges come, you're, you're feeling excited to solve it. I think when you're an entrepreneur, the emotional roller coaster is not, you know, between days. It's it's sometimes between hours. 
so there are moments where you know Vivi and I are like celebrating. You know, yeah, we we did uh, something awesome, like this selling out thing, and then like a few minutes later, people are like messaging us like, no, oh, you don't care about your customers and all that, and then we're like we're sad again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then the, the next, and then the next moment, uh, we we get an email from uh, one of our shareholders saying, hey, congratulations on you know having great results. And then we're celebrating, and then suddenly we have a HR problem that somebody yeah. wants to quit, and then we're like, oh man, another problem. You know, so like it's constantly up and down, roller and coaster. yeah, it's a roller coaster. And I think it's great that you you need to have a team who you're comfortable sharing these problems with, because you you need to to let it all out. Um, even recent, even very recently, you know, we uh, between Vivi and I, we have like very extremely emotional talks. You know, like. Some you know. I mean, you fight. We we don't fight. Yeah, I think that I think we we we, we rarely argue. You know, <laughs> because I. Because you don't know. No, no, no. Okay, so this is like if people ask my husband and wife, like, how can? Uh, for me, I don't understand husband and wife who go to different offices and then come back. What do you guys talk about? Because. How would he know who like Shasha is or whoever you're telling, you know? Um, so that's the only relationship we know. Um, and and I can't imagine having another relationship with Fazai, you know? Uh, I really enjoy working with him and I chose him as my partner and he chose me as his partner. I think not because it was convenient, like, oh, can I invite my girlfriend? Okay, yeah, let's do this together. It's really not, please don't do that. Um, I We really did it together because we saw that we complement each other's flaws. Like, you know, uh, he's, I'm, I'm very, um, I jump into things, I get excited, um, I'm very passionate. Um, he's more calm, cautious, you know, he, he, he calculates risk when he thinks. I, I just do. Um, so, so make sure you complement each other. Having a partner is extremely, extremely comforting and um, just have to make sure you have the right partner. Yeah. So for us, it, sorry, if there's any arguments, I'm the type that I have to solve it right away. Like I want, like, you know, men, right? <laughs> when we argue, do you see that your husband can sleep after that? <laughs> no, I can't. Like I'm like staying up. So what I do is I wake him up. I like literally shake him. I'm like, we have to talk about this now and solve it. We cannot go to sleep angry. That's my principle. Um, so never drag your your problems. Yeah, I, I mean it, it's a good thing because most of the time the the reason why we're arguing is you know uh, some business decision, and so from from when we were going out from the uni days, um, she she always had this rule you know if you go to don't go to sleep uh, angry. So even when we have like problems uh, in business, we will try and solve it uh, immediately. And if we can't decide between ourselves, we will just say okay, let's decide. Let's use someone else from the team to, uh, to, to, to split the difference. And so we'll take that. And I think, you know, it's normal in business to have disagreements with your partner. And it's great to have disagreements with your partner because that just means that you're thinking of, you're trying to think of something new. And I think the most important thing is, you know, when you make that decision, no matter like who's more right than the other person, it's important to, it's important to, uh, accept the decision and move on, and don't have any resentment, and put put your full commitment to that decision, even though that wasn't what you initially agreed on. Yeah. 